Hi y'all, welcome to my channel and in today's video I am going to be sharing with you our plans for summer school, so stay tuned. Okay, well, if you are new, welcome to my channel, Pursuing Peace. My name is Dina, and I am a homeschooling mama of five kiddos, seven and under. And on this channel, I share my passions for Christ, for homeschooling, and for encouraging mamas in their faith. And in this amazing, even though it's a little bit crazy and everybody wants mac and cheese all the time, <laughs> It's still an amazing season of motherhood. So if you'd like to join me on this journey, then click the subscribe button down below. And don't forget to click the little bell icon so you know whenever new videos pop up. You can also follow me over on Instagram at Dina underscore Pursuing Peace, where I share what we do on a daily basis. And I also, every once in a while, will put in there fun homeschooling resources. So definitely go and follow me over on Instagram. Okay, so today I'm going to share with you our summer school plans. We are year-round homeschoolers and all that means is that instead of taking one big break in the summer, we take smaller breaks throughout the year. So we do homeschool throughout the summer and we have always lived in a place where it's hot in the middle of the summer. <laughs> <laughs> and so going out to play outside, the kids can go do that for little bits of time throughout the day, um, but it's not something that we can do all the time. And with kids that are about my kids' age, I found that it was just easier for us if we kept our routine throughout the summer. And so we do have breaks, like we are planning on taking a two week break here in just a bit. And then we do like a chunk of school during the summer and then we'll take another break and then we'll do another chunk of school. You know, we kind of do that. But what I like to follow is six weeks on, one week off method of year round homeschooling and you can break it up down however you want. If you want to homeschool year round, that's completely up to you. But I found that that works for us and I found that that works for our um, CC community. We do do classical conversations and we um, are part of a community here where we live. And so it works out because they kind of do that also. We do six weeks and then we take a little break. We do six weeks and Christmas break and then so on and so forth. Um, so it works out really Really well for us and then we kind of just carry that on into the summertime so that's how we do year-round homeschooler homeschooling like I said you can do it however you want it doesn't have to be that you could do one month on um, one month off no that's probably that's probably too much <laughs> that would be nice though huh <laughs> like one month on one week off you know you can even probably do two weeks and two weeks I don't know I haven't done the math on that and just to make sure that you get everything done in one year that you're supposed to. But So if year-round homeschooling is something that intrigues you, then leave me a comment down below or DM me on um, Instagram and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Um, or just tell me how you homeschool. If you like to take that chunk off in the summertime, which is completely fine, and when my kids get older, maybe we'll do that. Um, or if you like to kind of spread it out throughout the year. So the way that I mapped it out, we're gonna have probably around 12, 12 weeks in there that I have some wiggle room that we can do different things. Um, something else that I should mention is that when we do have big chunks of time like that, like summer break or Christmas break um, or even spring break, I tend to um, not necessarily focus on language arts and math, which is something that we focus on during the main chunk of our um, homeschool year. But I like to focus on other things and do other unit studies. Like last year, we did the mammals unit from the good and the beautiful. Over Christmas break, we did the Christmas unit from gather round. Over spring break, we did a gardening unit from campfire curriculums. So it's just something that I like to do because I don't always feel like, like I personally um, or our family has the time to do those things in the middle of the school year. Once our, once my kids get a little bit older and we have more independent work in there, then I feel like maybe we'll be able to do history in there, you know, twice a week or science in there twice a week. Um, but also because we do classical conversations, I don't feel the need to add on to that very much as far as a complete extra um, history curriculum or science curriculum. We just kind of do supplementals here and there, reading books and doing little special activities at CC. Um, provides on their website 
Um, and so that's that's been enough for us so far. Um, but I like to kind of dive into um, different curriculums when we have time and we're gonna have time over the summer. So that's enough of me chatting and talking. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you what we're using over the summer. So the very first thing that I wanna mention is Bible because Bible is something we don't do only in the school year, right? <laughs> it is something that we do forever. It is our ultimate textbook, right? <laughs> as Christians, as believers, our first passion is Christ and the, and the gospel. And so I want to instill in my kids the idea that Bible isn't a subject in school, but it is something that we do every day. It's, it's not, I, I call it a textbook at, just as an analogy, but it's not a textbook. It's so much more than that, right? And so what we're using for kind of a Bible study this summer is the Truth and Grace Memory book. And this is a catechism book. And we've already started this and I do really enjoy it. It's got a few things in here and I'll show you the table of contents here. So it's got the catechism for boys and girls and that's what we have used so far. But it also has scripture memory um, and has Bible basics and it's got some hymns in the back. Um, oh, and it's got track your progress. Hmm, I didn't even see that. <laughs> Oh, and it's broken down by age, how to track your progress. Um, see here, all the memory verses and the hymns and stuff. We haven't used the hymns or anything yet because um, we do sing a lot of, maybe not necessarily hymns, but Christian songs th throughout the day, really. We just haven't dived a lot into hymns yet, so I just haven't used it yet. But what I am using is this catechism um, for boys and girls. And I do love this. My favorite part of this is that it has scripture references down here. So what it is, is um, they ask the question, who made you? And the answer is God made me. And it basically, if you don't know what catechism is, is, is basically their questions and answers that you memorize just to kind of um, build that foundation of what you believe and why you believe the things that you believe. Um, and so I really like this. So like the first question is, like I said, who made you? And the answer is God made me. The second question is what else did God make? God made all things. The third one is why did God make you in all things for his own glory? You know, and so it's got, let me see, we've only gotten to um, about question 12, but it's got 28, is it 28? Oh gosh, it's got a lot more than that. <laughs> it's got a lot. But it dives into like the Trinity. It dives into like one of the questions is who is God? God is a spirit and does not have a body like men. You know, it's stuff that we wouldn't necessarily even, I wouldn't necessarily think to teach the kids or maybe things that I haven't even thought of very much on my own. Um, and so that's what I really like about this. But like I said, one of my favorite things is that it's got the scripture references. So when we do this, I teach my kids, okay, so this is the question, who made you? And where do we find our, our answers to our questions? The Bible. And so let's look in the Bible. So before I even read the answer to them, I'm like, okay, let's read these verses and let's find out this, the answer to this question. And so I love that because it's teaching them, well, if I have a question, I need to look in the Bible and I need to read it. And, um, and it's got more than one scripture reference. You know, it's got at least like three or four, sometimes five or six references. And, um, and so we read them right there. We do our devotion at the breakfast table. And so we read them and we go through this um, every Monday. So we only do one a week. And every morning, awesome. Okay, who, who made you? You know, God made me. Um, and it's just so neat because even my three-year-old can answer these questions now. Like, and they ask questions too, like, well, what do you mean God is a spirit? And what do you mean there's three persons in God? You know, he's only one God. What does it mean to be three persons? And I mean, that's the Trinity and that's hard to explain. You know, nobody completely understands the Trinity, um, but it's a way to kind of dive into the Bible and talk to them a little bit more about things that, you know, we just would normal, not normally talk about with kids this age. Aubrey. How can you glorify God? By loving him and doing what he commands. That's right. Adeline, <laughs> careful. Adeline, why should you glorify God? Because he loves me and he's coming. Yeah. Abby, can you see God? No. 
You cannot see God. But he can see you. Yes, baby. Yeah. <laughs> but he can always see me. He can always see every, all of us, right? <laughs> and it's a good thing he can always see us, right? Because he loves us and takes care of us, right? <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Um, so I love this. So this is wonderful. We're going to keep doing this. And the Bible that we use um, to um, read in the morning is the hands-on Bible. And this is my Avi's Bible, my oldest. I bought it for her for her birthday. And it's just neat. It's the new, let me see, it's the NLT version. So New Living Translation. So it's easy to understand, easy for her to read. She reads it on her own every once in a while. But they also have, um, what you saw in there, different... <laughs> different um just sections of you know either activities or just something that'll help explain the idea a little bit better to them you know whatever idea it is that that verse is trying to explain it helps them understand it in a way um you know that's age appropriate and so we really i really really enjoy this bible and abby really likes it too so um, I think I'm probably going to get, once they learn how to read, that'll probably be one of the first th gifts that we give them is one of these um, hands-on Bible. And I will link everything down in the description box um, so that way you can um, check it out. Okay, so the next thing that we are going to do is History Year One from the Good and the Beautiful. Now, we are not going to do all of this. There's a good chunk in here we are not going to do all of history year one history their courses from the good and the beautiful are made to be done um in one school year so we are not going to be able to get it done in a summer <laughs> but in our classical conversations this next year we are going back to cycle one so we start in cycle one creation and then we start with ancient we learn about ancient egypt and the seven wonders of the ancient world and mesopotamia and like all of that and so I've been really intrigued with um, wanting to do the lessons on ancient Egypt. And now this seems like a lot of words. <laughs> But there are um, activities that are in here. There's an audio recording um, that we can listen to. Um, there's a map activity in here. And then also what comes with the Good and the Beautiful um, History Year One is this big book of history stories. So there are stories in here that we are going to be reading. There is, there's a read aloud that The Good and the Beautiful recommends that I am going to be getting. I believe it's Boy, The Boy of the Pyramid, The Boy in the Pyramid, A Mystery of a Boy and the Pyramid. I'm not really sure what it's called. Something about a boy and a pyramid and it's a mystery. So I am going to be getting that book and we are going to be reading it. I might do it as a um, audio book. I'm not really sure yet. Um, but yeah, so we're only doing lessons four and then here is lesson five. It goes into like the Nile River and the map of ancient Egypt. Um, and then, oh, and then this is like a, a game. And what I'm going to do is I might do this as a memory game where I copy it and then cut them, cut them out and then they have to um, match them up together and then we're going to talk about those different pictures and what the pictures are about. I did that in my Beautiful Feet, oh that's it, my Beautiful Feet um, books and they really enjoyed that and it was a fun way to kind of do this activity, this kind of activity um, and stuff. So I might do that, I'm not quite sure yet but I will probably update it on my Instagram. I usually update my, my uh, summer school stuff on my Instagram account, so be sure to go and check that out. Um, and they, this is what I really like. We're kind of gonna dive into, um, what is it called, hieroglyphics. Oh my goodness, oh, I was like, pyroglyphics? <laughs> it's so, oh, it's been a long day, you guys. 
<laughs> um, okay, so hieroglyphs. And so the good and the beautiful's history comes with companions, student companions, I think they're called, and they're all age appropriate. So there's different coloring sheets in there and there's different activities. There's a code, there's one where they decode the hieroglyphs, you know, and just different things like that in there that I'm, I think they're really gonna enjoy. And then we're gonna like learn about the pyramids and the different, you know, like, like what were they for? Why were they built? You know, just all of that stuff that's just so neat. We're gonna do a little activity, making ourselves some little Egyptian cuffs. Oh my goodness, my girls are gonna love that. <laughs> well, Solomon's gonna probably love it too. And then just learning about like the Egyptian afterlife, like what they believed, um, and contrasting that with ours, like what, what they believed and um, what, is truth you know and so that's just gonna be really neat so we're only gonna do a lesson four through about lesson eight or nine so we're just gonna do that I don't think we are even going to I'm not sure yet but it, it does come with a game called keys of history and I don't think we are even going to dive into this one because it's kind of like a trivia game um, and I don't know if my kids will even know most of those answers and so it might not be so fun for them but I don't know I might try it out, I'm not sure. So yeah, so we are going to do that. So just a little bit of the good and the beautiful history. We're just gonna do a little bit of ancient Egypt to kind of prep for the new school year. And then speaking of Egypt, we are also going to do the Egypt unit study from Around the World in Picture Books, part one from Beautiful Feet Books. And I have a whole video going very deep into what this is and how it works and how I lesson plan with it and everything. And I will leave that video listed down in the description box so you can check that out if you want to. But we are going to do the lesson plan for um, Egypt. Now this is not ancient Egypt, it's Egypt now. And basically this is kind of like a geography curriculum. It's Charlotte Mason and it focuses on um, picture books. That's what I love. It's around the world in picture books. So it focuses on picture books and it comes with um, one picture book and you saw it in the front there. We have this one right here and we have this book, big books of maps right here. Big book of maps. Oh, blah, 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 I'm all over the place today, guys, sorry. Um, but then it gives you a whole bunch of different ideas for picture books, and then it kind of has little summaries about each of them, so that way you can go and get them from your library if you'd like, or you can purchase them, you can do whatever you want. Um, some of these I can even find on YouTube, like uh, just a reading of it, and we'll do it that way. And this is a Christian-based um, curriculum. And since Egypt is a big part of biblical history, then they give you, like you saw here, different options to learn the biblical history of Egypt. And then, so here's Egypt's history and biographies of famous Egyptians. And then, of course, they do their nature study. So we're gonna do nature studies, and all of this is provided at the end of the book, all these pictures. And we go through and talk about all the, not all of them, but animals that come from Egypt, um, and the geography of Egypt. And then it's got a lesson here on poetry. And we've got the Sphinx there. Um, so this is, I love this. I love beautiful feet books, you guys. Oh, and then it's got, of course, art connection here. Oh my goodness. And this gets into, you know, like um, King Tut and his tomb and all of that. And then each unit ends with a cuisine from that um, part of the world. And I don't know if I'm going to attempt to cook this because it comes with a recipe or if we're just gonna try to find an Egyptian restaurant in our neighborhood. It might be a little bit hard to find one in our in our area, but um, yeah, we're going, we're gonna see, we're gonna see. My, my husband is a real cook of the family, so we'll see, maybe we'll have him try some of these <laughs> recipes. So yeah, so this is Beautiful Feet Books. We're gonna do um, probably maybe a couple of weeks of that because we will be doing it every day. So um, just a couple of weeks of that will be fine. 
And then the last thing we are gonna do for our summer break is arthropods from the good and the beautiful. Now this, um, I have not completely organized it in here yet, but I have a whole video on how I plan and organize the science unit studies from the good and the beautiful. So if you'd like to see that, again, I will leave it in the description box below. Um, I like to use these special binders. So I have all of that information in the other video. If you don't already know um, something about the science unit studies from the good and the beautiful is they come unbound. And it does say that on their website, but sometimes it's easy to miss. So um, I just wanted to make that clear. It is all completely unbound. Now what you can do is simply three hole punch this, stick it in a binder. That's it. That's all you need to do. <laughs> there are a few things in these unit studies that you will need to cut up. Like there's, um, let's see, there are like vocabulary words, vocabulary cards that you're gonna wanna put up like on a wall um, or you know somewhere where the kids can see it. Um, then there are mini books. Wow, look at that, oh, it's so pretty. It's so pretty, fireflies. Ah. Okay, sorry. Um, but there are mini books, so here, here's an, an example of one. So this is Ants, and it's got a few pages. Oh my. <laughs> too close for comfort. Um, there's got a few pages, so many books, you're just gonna need to cut them up, and you saw it was just, can't cut them up and staple them together, and you are good to go. It's so easy to organize these science units. Um, and arthropods, as I was kind of just skimming through it, it kind of seems pretty simple compared to my mammals <laughs> unit. Man, mammals had like 15 bajillion vocabulary words. I mean, seriously. <laughs> But just to kind of give you a look and see what this all entails, this is the table of contents here. So it goes through all of these butterflies, ants, bees and wasps. Oh, they have oral presentations. Oh, that's gonna be fun. Um, insect stations, mosquitoes, fireflies, termites, and silkworms. This is gonna be really good because we are gardening this year. And one of the things that I learned is that pollinators are good for your garden, which are like bees and wasps, hummingbirds, and like just all of that stuff. Um, and I don't like all of those things. I like hummingbirds. Who doesn't, right? Um, but like all of those other things I don't like. So it'll be good to kind of dive into this and <sighs> and love nature around us and get to know those things. And so my kids are not scared of um, you know, bees and ants and all of that, like I am, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> so just to give you kind of a quick, it's, it's kind of a flip through, not really guys, but um, just to kind of see what's in here, unit information. They always have a student journal in here and that's something that you just put together. It could be like a spiral notebook or it could be papers in a binder. It could be whatever you want, really. Um, so just something to kind of keep track of all the information. Here it's got a science wall and it kind of tells you about that. That's the vocabulary words. And some people use like the uh, trifold boards. I use decorations. So it can be on our wall displayed and we can keep them there, but it doesn't look like a trifold board on our wall, you know? <laughs> You can do it however you want. I know people have stuck them like directly onto the wall and that's fine too. Whatever, however you can do it is completely fine. And then it says here, lesson preparation. And I will show you an example of what that is. And it's super easy. This is really an open and go curriculum. And all it is, is every, in the beginning of every lesson, it's gonna tell you the objective of the lesson, like what your kids are going to learn today. And then it's gonna give you a list of the supplies that you need in order to complete that lesson. And that's it. It's so easy. Um, every unit study does come with a list up front for you. So you can just go through that and get everything ready ahead of time, which is what I do. Um, and again, that's all in that other video and I show you how I organize everything and everything in there. Um, another thing here, it tells you about the 
mini books here. And then The Good and the Beautiful has come out with videos. And this, this is something new, fairly new, maybe about a year ish that they've been doing this where they actually create videos for these different unit studies and they tell you where you can go and watch it and they're just beautiful beautiful videos my kids loved the ones for mammals and then it gives you like um, questions to kind of ask them after the video um, so they can you can see if they've retained any of the information something else that the good and the beautiful um, science units have are these extension lessons for grades seven and um, eight. And these, I just have kind of glanced through some of them because obviously I don't have a seventh and eighth grader, but these seems really good. And they used to have them in their old science units, but they've updated them recently. But the lesson extensions um, just seem very fun for that age group. Um, and lots of writing and journaling and just, ugh, just, I can't wait till my kids get that old. <laughs> so yeah, so we are going to be doing the arthropods unit and there are 14 lessons. Um, so we'll probably get it done in a couple of weeks um, because we'll just do one lesson a day. Maybe we'll do three weeks, just depending, because sometimes I break down the lessons if they're too long for my little ones. Um, and so it just depends on that. But two to three weeks, somewhere in there will be our um, arthropods unit. And what I also have are these books that come in the book pack for our, our arthropods. There's also another one called Fiddler Crab, which my oldest just completely read today. And, and it's somewhere in the house. I'm not really sure where it's at, but I saw her everywhere with that book. So yeah, guys, so those are what we are going to be using for our summer school. And then in the middle of that, we actually get to go to Washington DC with our um, classical conversations community. We're gonna take a epic field trip. <laughs> And I know um, a lot of things are still closed down, but um, just being able to see the White House and see the Washington Monument, see Lincoln Memorial, like my kids are gonna flip. <laughs> going to flip out um, and so uh, I've never been there personally so we're gonna be able to do that we are gardening so we're going to be you know doing that and getting deeper into that and oh I'm just loving it so far and the kids are able to go out there and water and um, get used to all of the different bugs and uh, um, start to understand what it takes to garden. So these things that I have shown you are, are the plans for summer school, but if I start to do one and we find that we want to do something else, then I'll just do the other thing. It really isn't a huge deal. Summer school for us is just very fluid and very easy going. And it's just a way for us to have fun day Monday, like every day. <laughs> So all right, you guys, well, that's what I've got for summer school. Like I said, everything will be linked down in the description below. If you'd like to check out any of these resources for yourself, comment down below. Let me know what you're gonna do for summer school, if you have summer school, or if you take the entire summer off. Either way is perfectly fine. So if you like this video, give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and click the little bell icon so you know whenever new videos pop up. Be sure to follow me over on Instagram because I am going to be getting different resources for our, our arthropods unit, like a butterfly growing kit. That's the technical term for it. I'm not sure what it's called, um, but different books from the library and different activities and games that we're going to kind of um, be doing while we're doing our arthropod unit. Um, and so I, instead of doing a full video of those, I'm actually just going to put them on my stories and keep them in my highlights. So that way you can go and check them out. So definitely follow me over on Instagram. So you know when those pop up. All right, you guys. Well, I hope that you are having a blessed day and I will see you in two weeks with another video. Bye. To learn the history, bib, the bib, the honeybird, honeybird, hummingbird. Oh, oh my goodness. Uh, uh, like, like, I don't even want to touch that picture. <laughs> but they seem very. Oh my gosh. But the site, but the egg, uh, nope. Does God know all things? Sure. Sure. So does God know all things?
That's right, God knows where my hidden snacks are, huh? <laughs> so many bloopers in this one. <laughs> All right, I'm going. <laughs>